Hello everybody and welcome back to The Lost Girl's Diary. Now we just left off with Olia's story about the star. And now let's get started on Vera's story about the red eyes, I believe it's called. And I noticed that Vera has red eyes, so I wonder if this story is secretly about her. We'll never know. But anyway, let's watch. Well, thank you all everyone, this is Blue, and let's get started. There is a trio in a camp. They never split up. Their leader's name was Max, but everyone called him the Beast. There is a reason for that. If you accidentally bumped him in the shoulder during a walk, he would tear you apart like a pit bull. Look at him the wrong way and you are as good as dead. Even his friends used to get it. Fortunately, they were strong enough to settle him down. They were tough guys too. Used to keep the entire camp at bay. But no one would report them because the beast would take care of it. No one would say a word against them. And the trio was having fun. In short, the guys were on the road to success, but they failed. Because of whom? Because of a girl, of course. There was a lass in the camp, whose name was, um, Vera. Whose name was Lena. Once upon a time, Max has seen this Lena girl doing exercises. What do you think? She was a gymnast, not some bookworm. And so the beast was lost. He couldn't get her out of his head. Even food wasn't an option. He asked her out on a date that evening. And she said, and she was like, I would love to, but there is a problem. What problem? Your friends never leave me alone. Make them. The beast accepted the deal and left. He didn't even notice her eyes, blazing with crimson fire, following him. All the night he was rolling in the bed, sleepless, and the next morning he had the talk with his friends. Are you okay? they said. We've never met this Lena before. Max chilled out and went back to Lena in the evening. You are wrong, he said. My friends have nothing to do with you. Lena was. Don't you trust me? They came this morning, threatening to beat me down if I meet with you again. It's up to you who to be with. The beast left with pain in his heart, unnoticing the red fire, the burning in Lena's eyes. The next morning, he set off to his friends. Dang it, beast, they said. We were with you all the day. Have you seen us threatening someone? Who do you trust more, us or a stranger? But the beast was blinded by love, and so he promised that he would kill everyone who touched her. In the evening, he came back to the place and saw Lena. Look, Max, look what your friends did to me. She untied her shirt, and he saw red bruises on Lena's pale skin. Frenzy filled his mind. I'll take care of them, he shouted. Wait, Lena caught his hand. You have already broken your promise. This time, I need proof. Bring me their hearts. And she put a blade into his hand. The beast was about to throw it away, but she leaned on him and kissed him. I am waiting until the midnight. Now go. And Max was off with Lena's eyes following him, shining brighter than the Kremlin star in twilight. The beast waited until everyone was asleep. He snuck into the cabin and stabbed his friend in the chest. He came to the second one and stabbed him as well. That's how his friends died. Max cut their heart out of their chest, wrapped them with a shirt, and went back to Lena. Did you bring it? Lena asked patiently. Max, as she saw him closing in, he handed the hearts over to Lena and she took them. She turned away for a second, and when she turned back, the hearts were gone. Only a blood drop on Lena's lips remained. Max was going to hug Lena, but she pushed him back. What's wrong? The beast exclaimed. 
I have done as you asked. Do you really think, the girl arrogantly said, I'm going to go out with a murderer of his own friends? But you've been beaten? <laughs> I faked it. I was testing how good a friend you are. Now beat it. These words turned the beast back to reality. He knocked Lena down and stabbed her with the blade. Again and again, but the blade didn't work against her. Only then did the beast see the shiny crimson eyes of his girlfriend. That scared the crap out of him. He backed away, but Lena took him and said, Where do you think you're going? Come to me, hug me harder. She said while disappearing into the ground. Max tried to set himself free, but he couldn't. And Lena was already halfway underground. She was about to take him along with her. Max gathered his strength, took the blade, and cut his hand off to break free from Lena, who disappeared underground with his hand. Max stopped the bleeding with a handkerchief and headed to turn himself in. Did he do the time? Nah, he was gone from his cell the next day. Only a letter, written with blood, and left said, The Red Eyes. Cool story, Vera. Huh? Big time. Tell us something, Diova. Me? I, um, like, I can't. Why did you even come? I, uh, to make a company. It's okay. You're not supposed to be a storyteller after all. You must be really strong instead, aren't you? I am, yeah. Fine, I'll tell one. The one? I think so. King of Rats, Part 7. <laughs> oh yeah, it gives me creeps all the time. When I was in a camp, it turned out the way that I was a camp leader's assistant, so I did her work often. I was used to being busy, besides being bossy was fun. It was troublesome, of course, but I earned a lot of respect from the others that way. Among the others, only Vera dared to challenge me. I am better in a fair fight anyway. We already tried it out, should I remind you? I just wasn't prepared enough back then. Hadn't exercised the muscles and stuff. Ugh, okay. You are stronger. That's it. Back then, some chatterbox told me that Vera is afraid of the dark. I am not afraid. Maybe you should tell us yourself. Easy peasy. Dasha came to me one night and said, This troop isn't big enough for the both of us. Let's make a bet. The loser gets transferred. So I accepted. If only I had known what her plan was, I would have accepted anyway. In short, we had to go to the catacombs at midnight. The one who left first was the loser. A deal is a deal, they say. So we set off at night. And the weather, almost as if on purpose, was cloudy, windy, and it was about to start raining. Besides, the flashlight barely worked. I felt like someone was watching us. We made it to the abandoned military base. We went down to the basement. Sasha was going ahead of me. We entered some room when Sasha turned off the flashlight and said, There, dear. Let's save the battery for the way back. But I was creeped out. I said, Let's get over the bet and have a pull-up contest. I saw her smiling the way she does. What's wrong, Bear? She said snidely. Afraid of the dark, huh? I freaked out and turned off the light, and regretted it instantly, because I felt someone watching me, and the way they did was not nice at all. I was all sweaty as if I, as I turned the light on, swinging the flashlight around, and Sasha was like, so soon? Less than a minute! I yelled at her and stormed to the outside, but the rain had just started. I wasn't going to go back to the camp. So I made my choice to stay before it was over. And that was the right thing to do, because... I go now? Yeah, go on. After she left, I turned on the flashlight, and when I was about to leave, realized that I couldn't stand up. 
It seemed like my legs went numb. So I put the flashlight on a nearby box and started rubbing my hips, trying to bring them back to life. It was useless. The thought of calling for Vera came to my mind since she couldn't get very far away and the echo was strong enough in the corridors. But I had just won the bet, so calling for help would be equal to forfeiting. So I kept on rubbing my legs. Unfortunately, I felt my hands losing control. They were wiggling down my legs, paralyzed as soon as I leaned on the seat. The only thing I was able to do was turning my head. What's up with me, I thought. Am I being paralyzed? Why, I haven't neither fallen or hit my head or taken drugs. Why can't I move? I was about to piss my pants. Calm down, Alexandra. Calm down. They'll find you missing next morning and Vera knows where you are. They'll find you by lunch at least. Maybe my senses will be back by that time. Breathe. I was sitting and breathing and looking at the dim spot of light on a wall when they appeared. I heard the stomping of little feet at first. The beast stayed in the shadow, but they got bolder and I could see their red eyes. Uh, who were they? Rats. My flashlight was almost dead so I could only see their shapes in the darkness. Then, I hadn't felt it. But I saw one of the creatures get up on my knees. The gray creature sat on his back feet and looked me in the eyes. Help! I whispered, trying to believe it was just a bad dream. But it didn't work as usual. Help! I yelled at the top of my lungs this time. The horrible beast hid away from my voice. All of them with the one sitting on my knees. It kept on sitting on its back paws, posing its front ones like a in a prayer and looking at my face. It seemed like the rat was smirking. Help! I yelled again, realizing deep in my heart that no one was going to come. Oh, I wished I were out of there. The stupid bet, the foolish leadership. What use is any of that if you're going to get eaten alive? I broke into tears of helplessness. That was totally out of my plans. The rat looked away all of a sudden, like it was trying to listen to something. Then it jumped off and the air trembled with the rat's footsteps. The horrible things in a single burst ran away and the room drowned in silence, breaking with my sobbing and some water drops. Was I safe then? Did my scream scare them? Or had someone heard it and come to my rescue? I burst into laughter with relief. I was sitting and giggling like an idiot because I was alive. But the fun was broken with some weird noise coming from the corridor. The noise of hundreds of small feet and squeaking rats were closing in slowly. My rescue hadn't come yet. No! I shouted. No! Get lost! But the rats didn't listen. The light of my dying flashlight showed me the room filling with the swarm of the gray beings. There is something big in the middle of it. The creature got into the beam of light, and I beheld the Rat King. An ugly beast made of six or seven rats was sitting on the backs of his comrades, moving its paws and muzzles. The being brought him upon my knees and scattered all over the room. I didn't see them, but I knew they were there, around me, watching their king, like in a theater. I was screaming as hard as I could. Trying to scare the monster, but didn't care much. It was heading to my stomach, slowly and clumsily climbing up my skirt, leaving a trace of pus and urine on it. At the time, I was awkwardly glad that my body was numb from the neck down. The Rat King made it to his destination, and I heard my shirt ripping as he bit me through it. I had given up on calling for help at that moment, only howling of helplessness and fear. Soon the monster will settle his hunger, and the rest of the swarm will finish the job. A flash of light blinded me, and in a moment I heard a familiar voice shouting, Get off! Away with you! I heard the ripping of fabric, followed by a thud, as the monster was slapped to the concrete wall by a childish hand. It was Nastia, storming around the room, 
kicking the rats and hitting them with a flashlight as if it was a club. I don't know how it didn't fall apart. The rats formed away, carrying their defeated king. While Nastya hugged my neck, close to knocking me out, crying. Sasha! Dearest, don't you pass out, please! I'm fine, I'm fine, I stressed her off. Can't move, though. Way to go, Nastya. You saved my life. You are a true hero. No words can explain how happy I was, but a terrible thought came into my mind. Nastia's legs will fail soon just like mine did, and the rats will get both of us. And so I commanded, Nastia, you've got to get out of here. Now, run to the camp and bring the first leader you meet here. Got it? Nastia nodded and rushed out, leaving me alone in the darkness. I wondered if my sanity could take it, and as her footsteps faded away, odd rustles caught my ears. Maybe it was just my imagination playing a bad trick on me, but it felt like the rats were surrounding me again. Fortunately, Nastia wasn't about to go far away. Let me tell this part. It's my favorite. When the rain stopped, I got to the outside and saw Nastia running somewhere. I caught up to her and we headed back to Sasha. Man, you should have seen yourself. But yeah, good things you didn't. A talking dead in the flesh. And then our princess got back to life after we brought her outside. When her limbs started moving, she freaked out with joy. Boy, I had never heard that much swearing. The pain was unbelievable. Oh, unbearable as my sensitivity restored. My whole body ached as if it were pierced by thousands of needles. My stomach was burning. Yeah, Nastya was dogging around Sasha like, Sasha, are you alright? Sasha, don't give up. Sasha, don't hurt. I shook her shoulders hard and sent her back to the camp for help. Nastya made a couple of steps and returned like, I won't leave her. Thanks to our beauty, we could settle her down. So we took Sasha's clothes off. All of it? Oh! I'll do the same to you if you don't shut up. I'm good, I'm good. And off to the lake. There we used her shirt as bandages in order to wrap her wounds. After we cleaned Sasha from... Put the details away, please. Alrighty. It's almost over anyway. Yeah, we made it back to the camp where we slipped into our couches as if nothing had happened. No adult knew about this, of course. Even Nastya kept her mouth shut. She was way... Oh, no. Was it for real? It was. Want to see the scars? I do. Dang, it's too hard dark in here. Just, I can't see a thing. Anna can I. They are too small to see. Try to touch them instead. Watch your hands, you four-eyed freak. I just wanted to touch. You can touch Petrov next time you see him in a sauna. Keep your hands off her. Okay. Hey, it's five till midnight. Time to call for the Queen of Spades. In the next episode. Oh, I'm excited. I'm loving this. During this episode was a little bit longer, but you know, I think it makes up for it because the two stories seem to kind of intertwine. So, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next part. See ya later.